Hello and welcome once again to my channel adventuresofmidlife.com. In this video, I will talk about my three day road trip in Oman. The trip took me through the diverse landscapes of the country, from mountains to deserts to a mud village and the beautiful Wadi Bani Khalid, plus great food. We had sought out the assistance of a guide, Hair Edin, to help us out with the planning. I drive a lot at home so didn't fancy driving in Oman during my vacation. Also, I was intent on doing a desert safari and dune bashing on a 4x4 isn't my thing. So I had Hayir with his 4x4 for the 3 day trip. On day 1, we left the capital Muscat in the morning and Hayir wanted us to start the trip with something very Omani, an Omani tea and then we were ready to go. We passed through the modern boulevards of Muscat, lined up with white buildings and entered the mighty Hajars. The Hajar mountain range starts from the Muzandan Peninsula in the north of the country and runs through the southwest. We drove through the west and it was mostly limestone rocks with small villages in between. Here and there, there were urban areas as well. This was Jabal Shams, the highest peak of the Hajars with a height of just over 3000 meters. There were what are called as ancient villages, with some of them estimated to be 2000 years old. But some of them were jutted with modernity, which is sturdy cement buildings with all the necessities in house. This is one sign that times are changing and the newer generations want to embrace modernity. Our first stop was the Jabrin castle, built in 1670 by Imam Balara bin Sultan bin Saif al Yarubi. This is a must see for visitors to Oman, as it is not just a fortification but also encompasses the builder's passion for science and art. Guides are not allowed to come in, but there is an audio system that delivers the needed information through headphones as we go from room to room. Altogether, the castle has 5 floors and more than 50 rooms, from prayer rooms to meeting rooms. Among the interesting areas is the sun and moon room. That room has 14 windows with half of them positioned to allow moonlight flood the room while the rest allow sunlight during the daytime but control the glare. The room setup also ensures the ideal air flow to keep the room cool. One of the most beautiful aspects of the castle is the roof with beautiful artwork. What is so special about this is that there was a continuum of the artwork from end to end even covering the beams. All the artistic, religious and scientific sites apart, this is a military castle and there are enough and more mechanisms to protect what was the kingdom at that time. There are two towers full of all the military tools needed at that time, guard towers, gunnery platforms, armory etc. And of course a storage facility for dates. Interestingly, hot date syrup was not just a delicacy but also a weapon. When enemies walk in, they will not just fist guns, arrows etc but also hot dead syrup flowing through strategically placed but hidden canals which were also called as murder holes. The castle and its inhabitants were provided with water through an elaborate ancient canal system, the so called fallage system that ran through the castle before heading out to nearby areas. Mm -hmm. 
afterwards we broke for lunch in Alhambra at a Yemeni restaurant. Hayir took us inside the restaurant to a private room where one could sit on the carpet and enjoy a generous lunch of gently spiced rice with chicken. And then we started driving again. The landscape was changing as we drove through our first night's resting place, the Misfat al Abriyin mud village. It became cooler with deep canyons. The Omanis call this their own Grand Canyon. The view was breathtaking, rocks shaped like steps as they slide towards the ground and here and there some vegetation. And then we reached the Miswat al Abriyin mud village. Check my reviews and the video of the mud village here. On the second day, we left the mud village in the morning and continued southwards towards the famous Nizwa fort. The Nizwa fort is one of the most popular spots in Oman for visitors and it was built around 1650 by Imam Sultan bin Saif bin Malik al Yarubi. The fort announced its glory and history from a distance, rising majestically and certainly terrifying for enemies during those times. The fort has, besides the library, coffee making and preparatory rooms, guest rooms, prayer rooms, etc. And it being a fort, it obviously has all the military facilities of the time including a prison, gun rooms, fake steps, and of course the hot date syrup defense mechanisms. Afterwards or beforehand, like we did, a leisurely walk down the Nizwa Souk is a must for visitors. There are stores and stores, silver stores, pottery stores, souvenir stores, etc. These are real guns or just souvenir? Yeah. Oh, it's real. real we guns. also visited a store specializing in coffee and dates. and then went to another store selling all types of halwa. On one side on display was a big iron girder that was used to make halwa once upon a time. In the background there was a video showing how it's done. Outside, I visited a small spot where men were molding clay pots the traditional way. And also outside the souk, I talked to an old lady making fresh Omani bread. Mm. 
She has been doing this for a long 36 years and over the years has crafted the art of bread making. The bread reminded me of those thin Chinese crepes or the South Indian paper dosas. It was fresh and so delicious. Simply made but delicious and light. One could have it with cheese and eggs as well but I prefer the plain one just to taste it. And then we continued on our journey. Here and there I saw abandoned village but also farmers still tending to their fields. Lush vegetation dotted the landscape and here and there a mosque adorned the landscape. And so were the ancient irrigation channels. For lunch we went to another Yemeni restaurant where we had two varieties of rice with fish and chicken. Late afternoon, the landscape changed and the desert arrived. Check here for my post and video on my experience in the desert. On the third and the last day of our road trip, we left the desert camp and got our tires reinflated before heading towards the Wadi Ben Khalid in the east. Oman is full of wadis or waterways, and Wadi Bani Khalid is one of the best. It is the closest to a car park, and the water has created a number of pools as it flows down the canyon. Khair took us to a special spot way up to have a better look at the wadi and then there it was the emerald water skirting through the rocks wider at places thinner in others disappearing and reappearing we walked down and started walking towards the set of pools the first pool was deep but i didn't see anyone taking a swim so we continued walking upstream it was at times a strenuous walk with slippery rocks in some places. Finally, after about 20 minutes of walking, we hit the waterfall. It was a hot day and there were many people already in the pool, so I also got in for a fresh dip. It was so refreshing. I didn't want to leave the water, but all fun comes to an end. And with some reluctance, I changed my clothes and walked back. On our way back to Muscat, Khair had organized a special lunch at a farmhouse near Wadi Bani Khalid. We were welcomed by our guests who served us one of the most delicious freshly made meals in Oman. A semi-spicy thick fish curry and a salad with diced tomatoes and shallots and green chilies to go with. All served with white rice. It is one of those meals after which a person coming after a good walk and a swim feels sleepy. And then it was time to return to Muscat. Well, that's it for this video. Here I talked about my almost three day road trip in Oman that took me to a mud village and overnight stay in a desert hut, some dune bashing as well as visiting some historic forts, souks and of course the Wadi Bani Khalid and good food including the Yemeni food that I always wanted to taste. Please check my blog post because I have more about my experience all around in Oman including a lunch at my guide Khair's home. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed my video. Hope to see you again soon. Ciao.